Hi, I'm Mike Evans, and today we're going to be going through the assembly of the castle wall section pop-up. And uh, so let's get to it. First thing you're going to need is copies of your castle wall, uh, pop-up castle wall PDF printed out. And if you're finding you're having trouble getting into the lineup double-sided, I found that, uh, you know, printing them one-sided first and then flipping them manually helps me get a better alignment front to back. On my printer, it might help you. Okay, you're also going to need some material for backing. I've got a uh, mat board for mine, and it's also helpful to have some scissors, double-sided tape or glue. I'm using double-sided tape today because it's, uh, there's no dry time, so I can just put it together and show you how it works. Um, and a tool for scoring. I like to use a dried out ballpoint pen. I've removed the ink cartridge. This one's nice and dry, so it won't leave any lines, but it will create uh, places where the paper will fold better. And some X-Acto knife, extra blades, and uh, if you have that stuff, you're all set. So let's begin. First thing you want to do is assemble the base. So we're going to cut out these base sections and uh, the middle line is marked there. It's the only line that goes all the way from one side to the other so we know that's where it's going to fold. Uh, some of these fold from corner to corner and some of them fold from flat side to flat side so pay attention to that. And that will be um, indicated in the instructions which type. So you basically, at this point, you want to cut. You don't need to cut them out exactly. You just need to cut about a eighth of an inch from the edge. Get that extra material out of here. You may find it helpful to keep a trash can nearby. And then we're going to cut that edge off kind of only on the places where it's gonna where it's gonna meet up. Okay. Alright, it's gonna meet up there. And it's gonna meet up. Here. here. So we're building the castle wall segment. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm not seeing castle walls like ladders. I don't know if you guys have played Mountain Blade, the video game, but uh, I for one am pretty excited that Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord is coming out at the end of this month. Theoretically, you know. If they need to delay it, so that they can make it perfect, I won't complain. But uh, obviously, if it does come out, I'm pretty stoked for that. Okay, so we're making it. So that's uh, if you love those scenarios, shooting, shooting your arrows off the parapets there, or. Uh, leading your men up the ladders in an assault. Well, you can create those same sorts of scenarios for your D&D players or your uh, you know, tabletop skirmish squads these with these battlements here. So I know I know I'll be doing that. 
I also have a copy of Zombie Side, so I'm thinking like <laughs> hordes of zombies, right? Hordes of zombies attacking like a castle surrounded by these walls. Anyway, we'll get there uh, someday. For now, let's put this one together. And then if you want to print out or put together another five to make the full castle, that's up to you. You know, I'm not going to stop you, but I'm not going to force your hand either. You gotta, you gotta make that decision for yourself. All right. So once, and you can you can line up the ground textures on these. You can see where things, things match up, and uh, attach that. It's gonna look nice and smooth. Now we're going to create a crease where that center line is. It's this line that goes all the way across. And that's going to show us where this pop-up folds down the middle. That's important to know. We're going to fold right on that crease we just created so that, uh, so that that's, that's the pop-up right there. Okay, so let's attach it back into material so that it's nice and sturdy. What we're going to do is tape all the way around the edge with our double-sided tape. And because I'm using a nice thick cardstock for this, uh, I'm not worried about it uh, needing to be taped in the middle at all. It's not gonna, it's not gonna have any weird folds there. And so once I've got that, So I've got that taped all the way around on both sides. We'll attach it to the uh, to the backing material there. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And if you do it right, you're cutting these angles in your tape. You can. Uh, you can find where to put the next piece so that you're never like wasted an angle spot, right? That's for some reason the fun part of this for me right now. All right, almost done with the taping. And this is probably, you're gonna need a lot of tape for this part. Uh, let's see, six inches per side plus 12 inches across the middle, six sides down the middle you're gonna use about five feet of tape one one two three four three four five yeah about five feet of tape for that so that's where a lot of the tape is gonna go so if you have a limited amount of tape and a lot of glue I mean you can glue the base down but again, because I'd need to let that dry and uh, for the sake of expediency, we're gonna, we're gonna tape it, but glue or tape work just fine. Also, I mean, I already bought all this tape. Might as well use it. Okay, a little trick I like to use to make sure the base is flat is that uh, I like to put one piece of base down there Line that up against it, and then put the other piece of base stuff on top of that one piece that's already down. That way, I uh, have a little space between the two sides. And that's necessary because, again, when you're putting your base down, if you haven't left that, there's going to be a little bit of tension there. And it's going to take longer for it to sit flat. I mean, you, if you're if you're the type of person who prepares things in advance, then you can you can get your pop-ups out like half an hour ahead of time. A sit flat. I found like you know you don't you know ten to fifteen minutes before the group is supposed to show up is fine. They'll be flat by the time everybody gets there. 
but this way you won't even have to do that. There's a little space in between the two boards which means it's going to lay nice and flat. Nice and flat. Okay, so now you're going to cut off your excess and I found the best way to do that is with a large paper cutter. But if you don't have one of these, maybe for some reason you lost yours or like you uh, maybe you had to give it up to save a friend or you know the country you know whatever country you're in uh, those are the only reasons I can think of why you wouldn't have one and like that happened recently enough that you haven't been able to run out and purchase another one otherwise you should obviously own one of these I'm just kidding you can do this with scissors you can cut off the excess with an exacto knife and your ruler but This is really one of my favorite tools, so I'll take any excuse to use this thing. You know, take over my kids' science fair projects. My wife will be working on something. I'll be like, uh, I'll take over that. Looks like you need paper cut. This is a job for me. All right, you've got the base. You got your edges cut out nice and neat. It's time to work on putting together the parts. So, your next move is to find part one. Part one right there, bam. But before you cut anything out, you're gonna wanna score all the parts. So, what that means is you're drawing a line with your scoring tool and using your ruler to make sure you get it straight right along these lines from one blue arrow to the next blue arrow. Now some of these don't have a blue arrow on the other side so that they would fit on the page. Just, uh, just draw it so it goes right off the edge of the page. That's fine. If there's no blue arrow on the other side. Just find the line and draw it until you hit the, uh, the edge of the page. Scoring. All those ones are scored. Move on to the another page. Score. These ones say bend to the fold, so you're just scoring until it hits this other fold in the middle. If you score all the way across, not a big deal, but it's I mean it's just it, it's not it's not uh, it's not meant to fold there, so it, it doesn't need to be scored. If you're not sure if you scored a spot yet, you can usually kind of feel it with your uh, your fingers to see if there's a mark there or not. All right, that one has been scored. Last page. have been completed. All right, so we got part number one. Cut that all the way out and attach it. And that should be pretty simple. A lot of straight lines. The tricky cutting is going to come to the, uh, the crenulations. When you cut with an X-Acto knife, pull the knife towards you. Don't push it away. Uh, another tip is if you're ever doing anything with an X-Acto knife and you think, if I slip a little bit, I'm going to stab myself or cut myself badly. Uh, that's when you stop doing what you're doing and try to find another way. I was actually doing that today. I was working on a miniature. Working on a miniature. 
and uh, I thought to myself, if I slip, I'm gonna stab myself in the thumb. Maybe I should do it differently. So I did, viewers. I did do it differently. All right, so now you're gluing one to B, one to the base. In most of these cases, I'm gonna recommend gluing to the base first because really the action of the base folding is where all of the force comes from in this pop-up, right? Folding and unfolding, like that's where the energy happens. So make sure you're gluing one to be one and that the tops of the letters and numbers will be facing the same way once it's glued. Then for most of these, you can line up the textures. In some cases you won't. If you don't see the textures lining up, just make extra sure that you're gluing the right spot uh, and you'll, you'll be fine. But uh, so there we go. So anyway, the, the, uh, the force for this whole thing comes from that base pulling open. And so if it's aligned with the base, that's usually uh, usually going to work out, I guess. Any extra tape, just kind of trim it off. You don't want too much extra tape on there. A little extra tape is fine, but if you get a big piece of extra double-sided tape, double-sided tape basically, in my experience, stays sticky like forever. So I'll have these pop-up prototypes that I did in like 2009, basically 10 years ago, and uh, I'll <laughs> pull them out and I'll have left a little piece of, of tape somewhere and it'll still be sticky. All right, part number two is very similar to part number one, it just goes on the other side. If I had a large format printer and I knew that everyone else who got these sets had a large format printer too, then I would have just, uh, and there it goes, exacto knife blade, just broke. Alright, um, yeah, then I would have made these one part, I wouldn't even have to attach them, but because it's a, they're big, you know, together better to make it two parts that can be glued so that more people will have the opportunity to print it out. All right, um, so these two parts together are going to form like that wall that is going to pull up everything else. So the base is imparting its force to these things and then they are doing the work that makes the rest of this pop-up work. So again you're gluing two to be one and then you're attaching two to be two And then you're going to go ahead and put some tape on one to two here so that those parts are attached because their being attached to each other is essential to this pop-up working. And that just goes right on the back of there. Just bend it, make sure those corners are matching up as close as you can. And there you go, and that should yeah, that comes up and down real nice. Okay. Yes, good. All right, so you've got those together. It's now time for you to do the next part, which is part number three. You 
can use your X-Acto knife, you can use scissors on this part. I would advise using an X-Acto knife if you're cutting out like the, uh, the crenulations on the top of the tower wall. But for this part, you can easily cut that out with some scissors. I mean, you could cut those parts out with scissors too, but those little like little parts in there, man, they're gonna get you. So part three, pretty simple part. It's gonna go on the inside of the wall here. And it's gonna fold in. And these two parts, these two little tabs are gonna go three to B2, three to B1, and they'll match up with the ground textures. It'll just kinda go into that little corner right there. So that's there. The next part we need to worry about is part number four. And part four and five are the crenulations that get added to the outside of parts one and two. So we're just gonna cut those out. I, uh, I don't think I've ever actually been to like a medieval castle. I have not uh, been to Europe yet. Could happen. Um, I did spend some time in Taiwan as a missionary, but. I don't remember there being any castles there. <laughs> uh, monasteries, sure. Those were fun. Pretty cool to go, go see the history there. But no castles. I mean, at this point, I, I could call it like research, right? It would be like a work expense. Go look at some castles. Make sure you're getting them right. All right, so four to one, that part. We're gluing part four to one. We're attaching it on this thing. And the textures are not gonna match up perfectly, but you just line this part up with this line. And uh, you should you should have some success with that. And now we are doing part five, which is going to attach to part two. Okay, part five, gluing or attaching part five to two. Again, got a little extra tape on here. Let's go ahead and trim that off. With glue, less of a big deal because that adhesive is gonna just dry up. But that's actually part of the appeal of the tape is that every once in a while some part will like come unstuck from another part and with the tape, you can't just push it back on, you know? That, I think I attached that just off where I actually wanted it to be, so... Let's line up the lines this time and the textures and put that in the right place. Great! So you've got some crenulations on there, some things for your archers to stand behind and get, get a little bit of cover. And we move on to part number seven, if we can find it. There we go, part number seven. 
part seven is kind of a complex part. It will form the upper level sort of like a little tower. Not really a tower, like just a just a slightly higher wall section. Okay? A little bit safer for whoever's up there, because the guy's gotta come up another another ladder to get up there. And uh I was playing a game of Mountain Blade Warband. That's where I'd put my archers, you know? Wouldn't you? Okay, so let's go ahead and fold. What's gonna, what we're going to do is fold all of these parts that have tabs down, and then we're going to fold up in the middle. A little valley fold there. And then we're, these ones are 7, three, seven to 3, 1, and 7 to 3, 2. And those, uh, those spots just need to be attached. For now, we'll, we'll uh, be adding... Oh, crap. We skipped part six. We skipped part six. That's what I was missing. Okay, never mind. Uh, you can attach part seven before part six, but we wouldn't recommend it. All right, do part six first. All right, guys. If you get them out of order, it's usually not a big deal, though. I mean, either there will be nothing there to attach them to because you haven't put that part together yet, or if there's something to attach them to, it's usually fine to attach them. This this particular one, there's not really a hard to get to interior space that you need to be worried about attaching things to. Um, so if you just did them in whatever order seemed best to you, that'd be fine. Um, that being said, let's do part six before part seven, just for the for the principle of the thing. And part six is forming the outer part of this wall that leads up to the upper balcony there and uh, so let's cinch that up also put a little sally port here you know a little door there this is a uh, this is a castle that's seen sometimes a piece though right this is not like at this current stage, this castle might need a little reinforcing to be ready for a full-out war. It's got a wooden door on the side. I mean, pay to upgrade that. So, part six, everybody. Now we do part seven, which we already cut out. Going to make sure there's adhesive on all the places that are going to need to adhere. And then we're going to attach that on there. Alright, 762, 761, those are basically going to be attached at the same time. You're going to want to make sure the bottoms of these lines match up with the bottoms of these lines here, and you should be fine. You should be. Not the exact bottom, just like. Depends on how well you printed yours out. Um, but as long as the textures line up and you're gluing them so that they're mostly even, you'll be okay. And then we're gonna attach 7 to 3, 2, 7 to 3, 1 to part 3 over here, and that just needs to line up with the top of that, forming a nice corner there. All right, so now we uh, we are on to part number eight. Now part number eight is a sort of little covered shed here leaning against the castle that sort of disguises the, uh, the sally port. Makes it so it's not as obvious. So that, you know, an invading army might be like, oh, that's probably just a shed. They don't know. 
It's the Sally Port. Boom. Um, yeah, either that or this is like a place for like your guard to kind of sit and people come up this side of the castle and they're like, what is your business here, peasant? Have you ever known guards to be respectful to strangers, right? Like in a story? They're never respectful. They're never like, oh, you're, you're a stranger. Come on in. Or like, I'm sorry, we can't let you in, man. I, I just don't know who you are. <coughs> like, how many strangers are, are trying to enter the palace on a daily basis that they've become so, like, hardened and jaded that their customer service is that bad? Okay, this one you line up with the textiles. Bam, right there on the corner. And then you can go ahead and line the one up with the ground textures as well. And you will be set. And then there's, uh, we're gonna leave the tabs to the end, so let's move on to part nine. Parts nine and 10 are Just some like wooden wall supports, I guess. And structurally, in terms of this pop-up, their main purpose, along with parts 11 and 12, is to support the ladder parts so that they look good. Their job is to make someone else look good. So for these parts, I found the best way is glue the bottom down, make sure those textures line up, and then kind of just let the top part hang, glue the, let the whole thing slide shut, push it into place, and that way these guys will be exactly where they'll be when it folds. Sort of a lot of that in this uh, in this pop-up. Castle walls tend to be a little bit repetitive, and uh, the nice part about that is that once you uh, once you do the first one, you know how to do the other ones. to go. In the same way that we did the first one, by letting it fold flat. And while that wall is flat, that's when we put, put that into place. So we know that everything is gonna, it's gonna cinch up nice and, nice and tight. Part 12. And we attach part uh, 12 to 1. And get these here, and what these are going to do is that once we get these ladder parts on there, these are going to um, these are going to make sure the ladder stays stays where it's supposed to stay and doesn't get um, doesn't get caught on anything when it's when it's folding. All right, so that is all of the parts that are not tapped. Ah, I spoke too soon. Part number 13, the banner. As long as this banner flies over the castle walls, the people will know they are safe. Okay, then we 
attached part 13 right there and those will those will match up well and we've got part 14 as a little support for part 13 just to make sure that uh, everything goes well for it it's like a little, little board there and it folds across the middle like that attaches up there and down there so all right we got our adhesives in place okay we've got part 14 with the adhesives on i mean part 13 with the adhesives on and we are putting attaching to there and attaching to here so that's part 14 and everything should fold flat nicely and there we go it is now time to put on the ladders and the other stuff so let's find T1 we got uh, we got to cut out the inside of all these ladders I'm just gonna go do that before I forget and end up with a ladder that I have to cut out the inside of later which will be a pain And I'll go ahead and cut out the interior uh, slots on tab 5 as well while I'm doing that. Very important to cut these out first just because it'll make everything go a lot smoother. Alright, so T1 we cut out. And we're going to want to slot tab 1 onto T1 before gluing T1 wherever it gets glued. Alright. So we got tab one, and it's on T1. Now tab one is one of the longer ladders. So there we go, this is T1. So uh, T1 to Okay, so we're attaching part T1, which is holding tab one, to part one. Okay? Then we're gonna attach tab two. Got T2 and tab 2, which we attach to part 2. Okay, right in there. Texture should match up nice.
Okay, so now we're attaching T3. T3, slide it onto tab 3. It's being attached to part number 7. Uh, part number 7. There we go. T4 and tab 4 get attached to part number 7 as well. So, we have these ladders coming down, these ladders coming down. We just need to put together the shed covering the sally port. Get this little uh, wooden siding on there. Protect the guards in there from any sort of uh, light rain, I guess. It's not going to do a whole lot else. Okay, so for this one we're going to slot this part, tap um, 5. Slot, tap 5, and tap 5 into place. That's a little tight. Trim off a little bit. I didn't cut that out quite as well as I could have. And make sure that this angled part is against the wall. Slot that on. And then we're going to add our adhesives so that T5 can be attached to part 8 there. Just a couple little pieces of tape that uh, we expose there and then, and then attach. Okay. And there it is folks, that's our castle wall section. And if you combine it with another one or two pieces of castle wall the line up and uh, you can make a full on full on castle here with you know, one of these little jobs in the middle. You have yourself some fortifications. Uh, it's going to be the sort of fort that enemy breaks itself against as you defend it, right? So, hope you guys enjoy putting your castle wall section together, and uh, you should be able to find these on stonehavenmini.com.